Hello. Okay. Next tutorial. This time I'm dressed up as a caveman or a Neanderthal, um, but obviously a more comic version of one, <laughs> more like a cartoon style. <laughs> Don't ask me what inspired me to do this, I literally just went um, party costume shopping and I saw this costume and I thought, yeah why not, I've not done a caveman yet. <laughs> so I just made this up on the spot, so I hope this is okay. Obviously if you wanted to make it look less cartoony, you just tone it down like a smaller nose and just <laughs> lighter shading and stuff. I just wanted to make it look as fun as possible really. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you'd like to learn how to recreate this makeup, stay tuned. So just to save some time up in this video, I've already blocked out my eyebrows, so I'll pop a link on the screen here to the tutorial I did previously to teach you guys how to block them out. I did it first just so I don't have to recap it in this video, just to make it a bit shorter. Then I'm going to talk about the prosthetic that I'm going to be using. So as this is going to be a character makeup, I mean all of them are character makeups I do, aren't they? But I mean as this is going to be a more specific um, style of character that's going to be, I'm going for the more comic route of things rather than making it more serious just because it could make a nice little change. Um, I'm, I've made a Neanderthal nose. So <laughs> I've made a gelatin prosthetic which is as you can see a huge nose. <laughs> Very comic but I've done that just because the, the homo sapiens generally had the flatter heavier brow and the larger nose and I think it'll make it look quite funny and it'll change my complete facial structure so why not? Um, I'll pop a link on the screen here to teach you guys how to make uh, gelatin prosthetics if you'd like to learn how to do that. Um, it's not absolutely vital, but I just think it's quite fun. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is build up my brow, as I said, because it needs to be a heavy, stern brow. Not angry, just stern straight across. So I'm going to be doing that with latex and tissue, just because it's more readily available to more people out there. So if you can only do one of these things, the brow is going to be probably more iconic to the look. So, yeah. But if you can do both, why not? <laughs> so I'm going to start by applying my nose. So I'm going to take some Pro Stick. You could use Spirit Gum, but Pro Stick's a medical prosthetic adhesive and it's very strong. And this nose is quite a heavy nose, so it needs to be a fairly strong adhesive. And I'm just going to coat a layer of my nose, a layer onto the prosthetic. And as it's going tacky, I'm going to push the prosthetic down. So there we are, so once that's all dry, I can start blending the edges. I should point out I've already pre-coloured my gelatin because I don't think I'm going to be using foundation. I might, but... Aside from blending like the forehead and a little bit around the nose, I don't think I want to, so I want to keep it as natural as possible. I coloured the nose with silicon pigments and flocking. You don't have to do that, it says you can paint over gelatin, but it just makes things a bit easier. Then I can take some witch hazel, which basically dissolves gelatin, and I'm going to take that on a cotton bud and just roll away at the edges until the edges disappear. So there we are. That feels so pretty. So then I'm going to take some liquid latex and a sponge and I'm just going to do once over my brow just in a straight motion. Let that dry out and do that three times and I can work on building it up. Then taking some tissue paper which I've already torn into so I've got finished strips. I can take the latex, apply it straight on the area that I want, just straight across my brow. And then before it dries I can just press the tissue down over the top of that. Then remove the edges. Then I can just coat that in liquid latex. So I'm going to do that for about seven coats, building it up, mainly as I said, straight across and tapering the edges out. So maybe it's seven coats here, then three, then one, and just blends out. So just let that dry in between each layer and keep building it up until it's prominent. Okay, so there we go. So very stern, straight across expression. Yeah, so as that's drying, I'm just going to talk about the colouring that I'm going to use. And we do most of the colouring with the American Horror Skin Illustrator palette, just because it's got a few nice red tones in there and a few skin pigments in there. And the idea is I'm going to spackle the red of that palette, which is the bloody face um, colour. And I'm just going to do that in like the middle of the nose and around the eyes here, just where there's going to be broken capillaries. And I'm going to spackle this up and layer it up so I can get a more skin texture, but it needs to be rough and aged and like sun damaged. I should mention you could obviously do this with like foundations and such but as I said I want it to be very light and these colours are very translucent because they're, they're alcohol activated and they're, they're just nice to go on and they apply really nice over prosthetics so that's why I'm using it this time. So just keep layering the colours up with different shades of reds and peaches just to really blend things in. Okie dokie, so there we are. So I've gone in with about four different colours in the end, mainly a dark red for around the nose and a, a blue shade around the nose to make it look a bit less, just to blend in the skin tone a little bit to make it a bit cooler. And obviously I've gone over my forehead with the uh, bright, bright red, just so I can start toning it up a bit, just to match the area around the eyes. 
Yeah, so now I've done that, I'm just going to let everything dry, and the idea is, with the reason I've mainly used the alcohol activated palettes is because this doesn't come off unless I obviously remove it with a makeup remover, so I can apply creams over the top of this and blend it for the contouring, so, and it won't budge. You'll also probably notice that I've not done anything in this area here, that's because I'm going to be layering it up, I think, with some hair, but well, I'll see as I go along, but yeah, I'm going to leave that bare for now. So then, I'm going to take a uh, Grimace Brown Cream, which is 1001, and I'm going to use that to do some of the contouring. So like some wrinkles around the eyes and the nasal labial folds, or the new nasal labial folds around these massive nostrils that I've made here, um, and some brow furrows. So what I'll do is I'll draw them on first over a time lapse, just so you can see where I've gone, and then I'll start blending it. Okay, so it may look, look a bit weird for now, but that's the basic map that I'm going for of the wrinkles and the furrows. So then I'm just going to make a new brush with no colour, and I'm just going to manipulate the brown cream away from wherever I want it to be hollow. So, for example, this area here needs to be a lot more sunken in than the cheeks, and the same inside here, so this area here needs to be more prominent. Same here, so that the eyes look more f sunken in. So I'll just shade away from the sunken in area. Whilst I'm still working on this side, I've not started blending this yet, but I'm just going to take some of that brown cream and just do a few crow's feet just on the outside of the, ho the uh, hollow socket that I've drawn. I'm also just going to take the cream, the brown cream and just do some shading on my temples. And I'm also just going to do the same with a really masculine cheekbone, even though most of it's going to get covered. I just want to map out this side of the face, so it's going to go across and then down. Then just join these two on, the temple and the cheekbone, just really lightly so it's darker on the inside and it gets lighter on the outside. So I've got carried away there, sorry, so now I'm just going to copy all this on this side. <laughs> then I'm going to take some black hair that I've already straightened out, this is crepe hair, and I'm going to cut it in really, really, really small amounts, but obviously longer than I needed to, because I'm going to be working on the eyebrows and I can trim it afterwards. So I'm going to take some spirit gum, apply it in the area that I want for my eyebrows, which I think I'm just going to do one long unibrow, because why not? Um, <laughs> and then stick the hair down in maybe two layers. Then I'm just going to take some crepe hair, which I've not straightened, I've just pulled it apart to make it wispy and knotted in places just so it looks like it's really matted together. But I've took some scissors and I've just staggered, and to do a bit more, staggered the top of it, just so I can take a line of spirit gum, glue along my, jaw, my cheekbone line that I've drawn here, and just attach it like this, pulling it away slightly so the lines are really staggered. But I'm going to do that all the way along my jawline. Then I'm just going to take the uh, Geo Cream again, and I'm just going to apply that over my lips just to really dry them out and just make them really pale. So then I'm just going to pop on a wig, a costume, maybe some contacts, and we'll see what we've got. And there we go. So I finished the look off by popping in some fake teeth, which are a little bit hard to talk in, so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> just to make it look a bit more manky, really, and... Yeah, just a bit more creepy looking. Um, <laughs> uh, I've popped in a really, really ratty wig, which I've just cut completely randomly. It's just been back combed like crazy, just to look as messy as possible. I ended up doing a couple little extra details, like I took some uh, black and brown creams and just made this arm look muddy. And um, I went down the edge of what this, well, the one eyebrow. But I went down the edge here uh, with the uh, Geo Cream by Grimace, just to make it look like a scar, just a kind of little battle scar, just to add a little bit more personality into it. <laughs> and the costume I bought from my local party shop, the necklace I got off of eBay, and I got the mallet from my local party shop as well. <laughs> I was gonna put some contact lenses in, but I don't know, I kind of like it with like natural looking eyes, so I left that as it is. So yeah, that's my caveman slash Neanderthal makeup tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like it, please make sure to know the usual. Rate, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And yeah, see you until next time. Bye.